No, fair enough. And then it's, it's a very popular range, probably the most popular throughout throughout history alongside the Adidas Predators. Um, mm-hmm. So you definitely got a good choice and, and for good reason as well. Uh, the tech is incredible. The the weight is insane as well. Um, so they really are. I mean, the, the new materials have just come out as well. Um, so if you ever you know, if you're ever looking for for some sponsorships, this is this is the video to do it. Yes, uh, so much. And, um, that sounds yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, that sounds great. And look, were there any telltale spines um, when you were wearing boots that you're like, yes, I really like these boots. Um, is there anything that sort of made you think that? Um, I think it's always just how snug they are my are on my feet. If they're too I'm really particular in like my boots. If, if they feel either a little bit too big or my foot's moving around too much in them, I won't be able to train well in them. It would just be a disaster. So <laughs> that's all in my head probably. But if they fit nice and tight to my feet, then I just feel like I can do quicker feet, like quicker uh, movement and things like that. So yeah, that's the main thing, just tight, tight to my feet. No, of course. And I mean, it's, it's definitely something that plays into the, the psychology of football boots, which I've done a piece on my website about. And it's it's really interesting how, like going back to Jack Grealish and um, some other football players as well, like Benzema, who have gone back to some, some football boots where they, they had their best form in. Um, it's very interesting how that then plays on the, on the players' minds. and how that then develops their game in a way as well and to the extent that they can only play in certain boots as well. Um, but no, that's that's really interesting. And then sort of when you've got the boots on your feet, um, one of the most interesting football boot stories I've heard is Tony Kroos, who is wearing the same Adidas, uh, Adipure, Adipower, I think it's Adipower, Adidas Adipowers from sort of 2012, 2011, um, really, really old boots, and and Tony Kroos's story is that he he only can wear white boots. Otherwise, he looks down, and then he's just he's just freaked out. So he can only wear white boots. And is there, to a certain extent, when you look down, is there something that you want to see? Is there a certain colorway? Do you like it flashy, plain and simple? Not necessarily. Like, if I don't have it, then I'll feel like strange. But probably like I like a simple boot. Um, I don't really like it too flashy, but then at the same time, uh, yeah, it's not really when I look down, it's just the feel, I think, of boots is my main thing. When it comes to football boots, it's just how they feel on my feet. And I guess how I train in them. Like maybe the first session, if I'm not training well, then I might blame it on the boots a little bit. So I go back to a different pair, but no, um, yeah, it's mainly how they feel. Yeah, I can imagine, and it's, it's a big pull for for all kinds of boot buyers as well. It's how they feel on feet. Are they sloppy or are they nice and tight? And for myself, I unfortunately don't really have the feet for materials. My feet are a bit too wide. Um, but when I have worn them, they've been they've been fantastic. But I've I've had to become accustomed to a more sort of looser fit to a more wider fitting boot. Um, but it's definitely part of the boot market that you look for that sort of responsiveness. I'm very much a fan of a one piece upper and where those kinds of those kinds of boots where there isn't that much distance between the ball and the boot, but I still like a bit of a, a plush touch to it as well. So I'm a bit picky, I have to say, but this is why I started the channel. Um, but so from that sense as well, did you did you ever have a training session where you had these new boots and you were like, no, these boots aren't for me? Have you ever had like a bad boots experience? Well, actually, having said that, my uh, the current boots I'm wearing, the Adidas, the first couple of training sessions I wore with them, my feet were hurting. So I was like, mm, do I carry on wearing these? Because they're going to hurt my feet, then I'm not going to want to train in them. Um, but I think that's mainly because I was so used to Nike and the way like, my um, Nike bonnets fitted that when I changed to um, Adidas, it kind of felt different and hurt my feet somehow. Um, but I stuck with them because Obviously, we didn't really have many games because it was lockdown. Um, so I thought, well, it's not too big a deal in training. So if I train in them and get used to them, then they'll be good. And now they're literally fine. They serve me really well. I love them. So, yeah. Good. Good. I mean, that's so important to to love your equipment and to enjoy using it as well. I mean, it's the it's a part of a part of the game that you know to a certain extent that 
players can sometimes control, like yourself. You can choose that you have Nike studs and Adidas molds. Um, but some players who are tied down to a contract, which I've also done on my website, um, don't have that choice. And it's an interesting dynamic between that as well. And then, so I'm talking about kits. Do you have a, what's the, take me through your match day kit bag. Do you have snacks in there, protein powder, your two boots? So on a typical day, a typical match day, I'd have my protein um, shake, which will be for post post game. Um, I definitely have a banana. Have to have a banana for every game. Gotta have that. Um, probably a few breakfast bars, just just in case I get a bit hungry. Um, and then I'd have my two different pairs of boots and so my molds and my metal studs. Just. Even if I know we're playing on Astra, I still have my uh, metal ones just in case. Like, <laughs> um, so I have that. And then what else do I have? If it's an away game, gotta have a portable charger. You can't have your phone running out of battery, earphones. Um, yeah, what else do I usually have? I'd have a foam roller with me, definitely. That's a big one. Before a game, if you've got a little bit of a niggle, you want to roll that out, so I definitely always have a foam roller um, or a little uh, massage ball or something like that. And I think that's pretty much it. I, oh, I have my notes from the, like, say we had an analysis meeting about the game. I'll write it all down in the notebook and take that with me so I can just review it just before I go on. Uh, excellent. And it sounds like you have a few sort of match, pre-match rituals there. And there's some, are there any more? So you said you have a banana, you flip through your nose. Are there any sort of, maybe you hop three times before you go in the pitch or? <laughs> no, I definitely have a match ritual. <laughs> I'm quite superstitious. So I have, I have to put all my right footed things on before my left side start off putting my right sock on and then my left sock then my right shin pad sock, and then my left shin pad sock, and then sliding my right shin pad, left shin pad, and so on. And then I'd get to my boots, obviously, put my right boot on first, left, then my left foot. Um, and then I guess that's about it really for off, off the pitch. But when I get on the pitch, I have to do like some jumps or something before the kickoff. I <laughs> just jump a couple jumps up and down. But yeah, that's probably my main rituals. But yeah, quite superstitious person. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's a, it's a big game on the Sunday, you're, you're playing for Millwall, going up to, to Arsenal, um, fortunately, and then you, you're you faced with a, with a choice of all the boots that you've had in your life. Is there a set pair, I know you've mentioned a few, but is there a set pair that you're like, right, that's what I'm, that's what I'm wearing today? I think it would be... I haven't been able to show you them. The ones I left in uni, they're um, the Phantom, the Nike Phantom line, the moulds. And because I wore them in so much over lockdown, like when they're so worn in, they're just like so comfortable and just don't like light on your feet. So I definitely have to go for that pair, I think. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. And I mean, myself has to be the, the Puma one, 19.1. Um, I love a bit of lace customization. Um, I love the one piece upper and then a bit of a, a leather toe box as well. And on that note, have you ever been sort of a leather fan or you have you always been more towards synthetic just because that's what's been available or cheapest? Um, I've been more synthetic like my whole, whole time. I think the only leather boots I had was the Pumas when I was younger. I think I think they were leather as well. I don't actually hundred percent know. Um, but yeah, I think as I've grown up, like everyone's had like the new boots, and all the new boots are usually all the well-known new boots are usually synthetic. So then obviously I was influenced by that, and I haven't really changed since. Because and now I feel like if I if I had leather, it might be like I feel like it'd be too heavy on my feet or too bulky or something. So that's probably just me in my head thinking that. <laughs> In that sense, have you have you ever sort of thought about the aesthetic of football boots? So like, okay, I shouldn't buy these boots because you know I'm wearing a blue and white kit, or I'm um, sort of I've gone this route and then I'm loyal to this brand. And then more so, have you ever thought about how boots look when you're like sort of when you wear them when you were buying them? Or yeah, that is definitely a factor. I think not a huge factor, but I definitely think about it. Uh, if they're going to be too bright, if they're like bright, I've never gone for a bright yellow boot. I don't think I've ever worn a bright yellow boot. I feel like 
it's too in in my mind if I'm on the pitch and I'm wearing bright yellow boots I'll stand out so I mean it could be a good thing but then at the same time I quite like a low-key kind of boot um and I, <laughs> there have been times where I've worn a boot and it has completely not matched the kit at all and you just I don't know you're just like oh it doesn't match the kit but there's nothing you can do about it after you bought it so <laughs> but yeah that definitely is a factor you do think about like the aesthetic of the boots as you buy them I can imagine it's, it's something that um, I haven't actually thought about too much myself. Um, traditionally, you know, my, my school when I played a lot, we, we wore black socks, so a black and white kit to be honest. So then it's just black boots or white boots if you really want to. But I mean, as much as I love the aesthetic of white boots, I've never been able to, to get a completely white pair. And I would just, I would just not be able to, to face those muddy pitches. Um, mm -hmm. With, with those white boots um, and in, in that sense do you think that sort of blackout colorways of boots are you are you seeing them as a as an all-time sort of timeless classic that will never go out of fashion or do you think the current market which are producing a sort of blackout boot every single sort of maybe two months or so um, is that a bit too much uh, for me personally I love the blackout colorways I think they're just so sleek and they look so clean. Um, I don't think they'll go out of fashion too much, to be honest, because black is such a basic colour, isn't it? And it, it's quite a neutral colour, so it'll go with most things. Um, and so I definitely think companies will still want to create them, but maybe not as many. It depends, it just depends if the market, if people still want lots of black out boots, then obviously keep making them, but yeah. Definitely keep them, I'd say. <laughs> okay. No, fair enough. And I mean, another post I've done on my website is whether blackout boots are actually going out of fashion. I remember the times when they would come out very rarely and that would be the, the talk of the town, but it seems there's a blackout colorway all the time. And same with the remake as well, that there used to be so few remakes of some classic boots, but now because of their popularity, of course, they're being sort of remade all the time. And that's where the classic renaissance comes in. And it sounds like I'm doing my own sort of PR here, but again, I've done a post that, about that on my website um, where this classic renaissance has sort of come from. Um, yeah. And in that sense, are, are there any boots that you'd, you'd love to have remade? I think, I don't, I think just based on my childhood, probably Adidas F50s. I don't, I, have, I don't really know whether they've remade them before or anything, but I just think it'd be so cool to have one of those pairs again that actually fit my feet like my size not when I was younger so um, yeah I think that would be really awesome to have them back but other than that I can't really think of a different pair. Uh, fair enough and the F50 is, is obviously an all-time classic as well um, well Josie that basically brings us to the end of the interview thank you so much for uh, allowing me to to get to pick your football boot brains a little bit and for, for all the help yeah all the help during the during the process um thank you so much again yeah thank you for having me i've really enjoyed it it's been fun amazing awesome